Hi everyone and welcome to our third video about essay introductions. Usually essays contain four main sections or four main parts. A little bit of background or context to explain what's the topic all about, then an identification of what is the problem that this essay looks at. So in your case it'll be what is the risk? What is the human risk that you're looking at or the health risk that you're looking at? And then it usually makes sense to give an overall summary of what's your argument, what's your key message for this piece of work, and to outline what the structure is going to look like, what are the key points that you're going to discuss in here. So we're going to go through a couple of examples, pulling out the four main sections in the examples. So let's take a first one. This one in the darker section gives that overall context. So the purpose of this paper is to compile a risk assessment as per the environmental health risk assessment guidelines for assessing human health risks. So it tells us early on what's the overall topic. All right, so the topic is that we're going to do a risk assessment. Then what it does is it narrows down to concentrate on what are the environmental hazards in regards to the effect of climate change on the incidence of tick-borne encephalitis in Sweden? So this is the, the narrow focus of their essay. This is the particular health risk that they are looking at. So it's that problem that they're looking at. Then what they do is they give the signposting next. So they actually say what order they're going to cover the topics in. So they're following that, that framework, the five stages. And in there, they describe what those points are going to raise. Now, one piece of feedback on this would be that if you have signposting that looks like this, you could actually show a little bit more of your analysis. So see in here how it has the five stage model begins with issue identification that reflects on the key issues and community concern. You could go a little bit further to say, well, what are the key issues? What is the community concern? How strong is the community concern? And then you could do the same thing. So the next thing is the, the next hazard identification, which isolates the hazard of concern. So again, identify it in the introduction. What could be the hazard identification? Then a dose assessment. So they could tell us in here, what the relevant toxicity information is. Is it serious? Is it not serious? What's the impact to human health or what's the impact to public health? So they could go a little bit further to actually show us what the key findings are in each of those stages of the model. But overall, this is an example that did do really well. So do keep that in mind. And sometimes signposting does well when it's nice and concise, when it's short, but if you can have an opportunity to tell us what your key findings are early in the paper, that usually does well to outline your key message. Next, this introduction finishes up with the overall argument. The application of this methodology in this piece will demonstrate the harmful impacts of climate change in reference to tick-borne encephalitis. So it's telling us overall it is a concern, it is a public health concern. So that's a nice neat introduction which does those four main things. Let's have a look at another example. So this introduction is a little bit longer. Now in this one, they do again start off with a little bit of context. So to set up a little bit of history about um, Bangladesh's Sundarbans and to show why it's ecologically important. Now that, if I was to give a little bit of feedback, would be that you could probably tighten that up. If you were looking at a word count that's getting a little bit long, if you wanted to tighten things up, usually context is where you can, where you can make things concise. The next part is to identify the problem. So the problem is, uh, is that that area, that site, is under threat from a proposed coal mine. And the project started in 2010, and it's raised controversy among the environmental activists and citizens in that area. So the problem is that there's this coal mine that's going to have a big impact on the environmental um, uh, area there. So it's setting up that problem. Again, this could probably be tightened up a little bit. It could probably be made a little bit more concise. The next thing that this person does is to tell us what 
their project is looking at. So this is telling us their argument. And what they're actually doing there is they're saying that even though there has been an impact assessment already, they are arguing that that impact assessment, the C, uh, the current environmental impact assessment was not sufficient. So they are going to do their own health risk assessment and make a judgment on that. And they're going to say, usually you would expect from this that they would say that it will have a harmful effect on human health because they're preempting that by saying emissions and waste from coal plants can have harmful effects on human health. Finally, they end with a little bit of signposting. They're telling us what the structure of the essay is going to look at. So existing literature on air and water pollution caused by coal combustion, etc. Now that is quite a quite a concise example of signposting. They've summarized the entire structure of the essay in just one sentence. It does, as a reader, leave you a little bit unclear about what is talked about where, what are the key findings, but this might be an example where you have a nice and concise signposting. Again, have a think about whether you could, in your own signposting, tell us what the key findings are. So for instance, with the potential human health impacts that they're looking at here, they could say what kinds they are, what kinds of negative effects that they have, or what kinds of effects do they have in general. So that wraps up our video on introductions. Next, we're going to be looking at paragraphing.